This video corresponds with Lesson 5 in Unit 4B, which talks about how to solve equations using square roots. This is a concept you learned back in Unit 4A. Again, the only difference with this is that we'll see answers that are imaginary. So, in order to solve equations using square roots, your goal is to get the x by itself. More specifically, we're looking to isolate the x squared term using what you know about solving equations. So here are three examples here that are pretty common in terms of how you would solve and see these different types of equations here. So let's go ahead and work through them. Taking a look at number one, we've got 3x squared plus 15 equals negative 60. Goal is we want to get the x squared term by itself. So let's go ahead and move the 15 by subtraction. You'll get 3x squared equals negative 75. Then let's divide away the 3. You'll get x squared equals negative 25. Once you have the term that's being squared by itself, this is the step in which you will then square root. Do not square root until you get to the step in which you have just the term being squared. That's the only time you're going to square root in this problem. Do not do it in the very beginning and then wonder why you're getting a bunch of weird fractions and decimals and all kinds of weird stuff. You cannot take the square root until the term that's being squared is by itself. So once we take the square root of both sides, you get x by itself. Remember also, when you take the square root, you need that plus minus. Now we're going to look at square root of negative 25. First things first, the fact that there's a negative sign means we're going to pull an i out, and then we're going to take a look at square root of 25. Well, that comes out to 5. So I can rewrite square root of negative 25 as x equals plus or minus 5i, and I've got my answer. Second problem here is pretty similar, but you notice we've got the squared term being surrounded by parentheses. So again, the goal is to get that term that's being squared by itself first, then we'll square root. Two things we're going to do first. We're going to subtract 7. So we get negative 5 times x minus 7 squared equals 90. Then we're going to divide away negative 5 because you cannot distribute it in. The squared prevents you from doing that. So you're left with x minus 7 squared equals negative 18. x minus 7 squared is the squared term. It's the only thing we have left on that left side. We're going to now do the square root step. That's going to leave me with x minus 7 equals plus or minus. If we look at square root of negative 18, I can pull an i out. 18, it's not a perfect square, but we know it breaks down into 9 and 2. So I can rewrite that as x minus 7 equals plus or minus 3i square root 2. I'll add 7 to each side. And I'll get x equals 7 plus or minus 3i root 2. In our last problem, again, the goal is we need to get the term that's being squared all by itself first, and then we'll be able to work back, work in square root and get x all by its lonesome. So you'll notice here we've got x squared terms on both sides of the equation. We've got constants on both sides of the equation. Let's pick a term and move it. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 8x squared from both sides. Negative 6x squared minus 9 equals 3. Add 9 to both sides, negative 6x squared equals 12. Divide by negative 6, we get x squared equals negative 2. I now have the x squared by itself, now I will square root. That leaves me with x equals plus minus. I can pull the negative out, there's my i. Square root of 2 doesn't do anything, so I just leave it alone. And I get a final solution of x equals plus or minus i, square root 2. So these are pretty common examples that you'll see when you have to solve equations taking square roots. Biggest thing, again, to realize is you don't just automatically square root at the beginning of the problem. You can't square root anything until the term that is squared is finally by itself. So that's how you go ahead and solve equations using square roots. And now you have some examples here where the solutions come out to be imaginary or complex.